the season like for you? Um, shorter than I would have liked. Uh, on both ends, uh, coming in with an injury and also uh, knowing last night was our last game of the season. Um, obviously, coming off an injury, uh, there's some, and coming into a new team, there's some growing pains. There's trying to get back into it. Um, everyone else is in good game shape, and you're trying to get into game shape. So um, at times, I thought that it was a tough start, um, but thought that with the coaching staff and everyone that I was able to find my groove pretty quickly. Um, obviously going through the season, I uh, had a little bit of a production lull about uh, 20 or so games in. Um, that's something that I'm looking to not have next year and to work on that consistency from a production standpoint. I don't think my game wavered too much, um, but sometimes that happens and it's with um, that experience, well, I think will help my career down the road. It's been unbelievable. Uh, it's been so welcoming for not only my teammates in the organization, but for the entire city. I've seen nothing but unbelievable support. And um, obviously, it was definitely um, uh, a big trade, being that Jack, the former captain, was involved. And so um, obviously, there's going to be some mixed opinions from the fan base and from the city. And I, I just saw nothing but um, overwhelming support so I have to say thank you for that it made it my job a lot easier and um, my family's life a, a lot uh, a lot more enjoyable in that regard um, but yeah no it's been it's been nothing but a dream come true and something that I've uh, I spent probably the last since I was three years old um, looking to maybe do one day uh, I didn't know when it was going to be or maybe even try to finish my career finish it off or anything like that it happened a lot sooner than i than i thought it was going to but I, i'll tell you uh, there's um I, i'm very happy that it did happen did you notice anything that changed about yourself being in vegas as opposed to being here where um just about yourself kind of like also talked about you having being infectious and were you this did you find yourself the same way in vegas as opposed to being I don't think I, I don't think I changed uh, my personality or how I carry myself or how I interact with my teammates at all. I, I'd say that I, I guess my my role going from one of the youngest guys to one of the older guys on this team is is something that. Um, maybe made it, made it a little bit more influential or impactful, I guess, within the group. Um, we have a very young team in this locker room, and um, it, it's, it's a team that I love being a part of, and it's a team where it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how many games you've played or where you've played, everyone in that locker room has uh, led in some facet. And it starts from the guys up top. It starts with Okposo and Gergensons and the, the culture that um, they've been able to create uh, in the locker room has been unbelievable. In that sense, maybe, how much did you learn from being in the room in Vegas with a bunch of older leaders to know that, to realize when you got here that now you had to become one of those guys because you're one of the older players in some ways? Yeah, I mean, I learned from countless um uh, Unbelievable teammates, uh, veterans. I mean, I could. There's a really long list, and I'll put. I've done it before. I'll put Mark Andre Fleury at the top of that list, and a guy like that. And uh, I, I learned from my rookie season every little thing about being a pro from that guy. How to treat your teammates, how to treat the fans. Um, he just went above and beyond every every single day, and that was someone that I I, I um, aspired to even be an ounce of what he is for the hockey community and for each and every team that he's been on. Um, but yeah, coming here was uh, a little bit of a change in that way where guys are younger on this team. So I, I think there was more guys looking up to me and 
Uh, that's something that I, I would never want to take for granted. But like I said, I mean, I looked up to a lot of younger guys too. There's a lot of leaders in that locker room. There's a lot of really good hockey players that I try to learn from each and every day. And it was uh, it was just a fun group to be around. And yeah. Alex, it, it strikes me that your career almost has gone in a strange circle. The first year in Vegas was supposed to be, you know, a year where you grow and you look to the future and you got thrust right into the Cup final. Was this year almost the expansion year feel, where now you've learned a little bit, and you're growing together, and you think of the future compared to the first year in Vegas, what it was supposed to be? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I get that, and um, I guess yes and no, uh, in, a, in a way. I, I um, There's a lot of guys, there's a few guys in this locker room and that have been here for a long time and kind of have had to... Uh, I don't know, go through a lot of tough times, really buy their time and uh, continue to work for this organization to eventually start to turn around and and uh, continue to look at the positives and continue to build for the future. So I guess in a way it's an expansion team of laying down, uh, I guess, the ground floor there. And um, But yeah, I, I mean, there are a lot of guys who have been in this city, and I think those are the guys that have kind of wanted to kind of wipe the slate clean and really build something special here and it's it's been I, I think we've seen it in our locker room even more than I think the fan base and um, you guys here have have been able to see it so it's been it's been a lot of fun we've enjoyed uh, each other a lot but I mean I guess you can pick it apart and look at it maybe it is an expansion or not but uh, we're looking at this as a proud organization who has I guess had some uh, hasn't had too much success in the past, and we're looking to get back to it. The last two months, obviously, you guys had a lot of quality wins. Um, you know, in the rearview mirror, do you understand the feeling a lot of people have that the Vegas game might have been a certain line in the sand for this organization and a certain exorcism, just the way it went down? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a great win for our organization. I mean, they have an unbelievable team over there. It's a veteran team, and. Um, a team that's not easy to play against. So I thought that was a huge win for us. It was a big morale boost, and um, I, w I would be lying if I didn't say it didn't feel good to be my old team. It's it always does. So um, yeah, I think that was uh, it was a fun game for us, and it was a big morale boost. Kyle said he sensed like an honest um, expectation within games that you guys were going to win. That everyone believed that was yesterday a microcosm of that. Did you see that throughout the year? Yeah, I, I've, there's been a huge change in that mindset. Um, I've heard Kyle touch on it a couple times, and um, when you're going into the third period, walking in the locker room, down by a goal, uh, four months ago, the mindset would have been like, oh, let's see what will happen. Now it's, okay, you know what, whatever happens, what, whatever's happened, happened, and now we can, can, we can win this game. So that belief of being able to win, I think, has really um, elevated in our group each and every game. Alex, is that sustainable? I mean, can that be sustainable over, given the fact that this, most of this team comes back? But how do you make maybe how do you make that sustainable going into the start of next season? That that belief. Work, honestly, just work. It it um it comes naturally when you work. When you start winning games, it cont continues to build, and obviously we've. I think we made waves to show teams that we're not pushovers. That it's not point night against the Sabers. It's it's you're gonna have to come in and you're gonna have to try to outwork us, and that's a mindset that I think just kind of builds into itself. Is you work, you do the little things right. That sustainability of hey, we can win. Just it's not. It doesn't have to be talked about. It just happens. At the end of the season, when you guys started to bring more fans back in, what did that mean to you to see a couple of full houses? And also, what made this team likable for fans to come back? Um, I said in a couple of previous interviews early in the year, I think that we have a pretty blue collar team. I think we go in and we work really hard. And Buffalo is a blue collar city. Uh, it's a city that isn't afraid to get their hands dirty. It, it, it takes pride in what they have and where they've come from. And uh, 
we have tremendous pride in our locker room of being able to put on that Sabres jersey and represent the great city of Buffalo each and every day. And to see the fans, um, obviously it's, it's wavered over the past little bit here, and to see them really start to to uh, embrace us has been really special for me personally, but also you can see the excitement in some of the younger guys and some of the rookies and guys who in the beginning of the season and or last year didn't have the fans behind them. And now to see that we do has been um, amazing nonetheless. And it's been a really special time and we've really enjoyed it. And now that the season's over, what do you take away as your favorite memory after this whirlwind since November? Oh, um, there's been a lot. I mean, just being here in general, I think that there's a few, few different times when I'm, I've just had to really sit back and be like, wow, this, this is something special. This is something that I'm just lucky to be a part of. And um, I can't really pinpoint one time or another because there's been stuff off the ice and on the ice that I've, I've really enjoyed and um, really come to cherish. You mentioned yeah no I think um, I, I have taken a step in my previous roles um, when I was with Vegas I think I was in more of a second third line role and to be able to jump up here into a top six role has really I think helped elevate my game and my confidence and I got to give um, props to the coaching staff for really helping me with that and really just I was kind of just thrown right in and it was it was a lot of fun and um, like I said the, the guys in the locker room made it a lot easier and they embraced me fully and um, to be able to have some success behind that too uh, was really nice and it's something that I'm going to continue to try to build on. You didn't have a normal offseason going through the injury in what ways are you going to benefit from actually having a summer to train and prepare for yeah, I haven't had a normal off season in a couple of years. COVID uh, created the bubble, and I think I was, I think we had an off season in the fall time, and it was still even short then. And then last year, obviously, I went two weeks in, and I figured out I needed surgery. So that was uh, that was a tough pill to swallow there, where I lost my entire summer. I think I was telling the guys I hadn't golfed in about a year and a half. So that'll be nice to get back on the course, but um, it'll be good to really kind of. I guess get back to building my strength up and trying to get more longevity and trying not to be injured. So there's a lot of things that I want to work on off the ice, along with getting back to really having a couple good months of really skating and building on skills, skills work, and uh, looking to get back here um, sometime down the road in the summertime and maybe get a few more guys in and, and really start building for next year. So I'm excited about the summer for sure. I know athletes always Every team in the Eastern Conference playoffs this year is a 100-point team. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there was a big discrepancy in the East. and um, But at the same time, I, I saw not only us, but a couple other teams take some steps in the right direction. So I think there's going to be uh, less of a discrepancy next year. And I think there's... Um, a really good chance that we could maybe, I guess, close the gap and f have a little bit more success and see what happens. I'm not going to make any promises, but we have high expectations in that locker room. I think even higher than in the city of Buffalo and you guys in here. So we, uh, we're going to take pride in that and we're going to come and work and we're going to try to prove uh, some people wrong. Well, can you say playoffs? I mean, that's that's what you you're can. Really get. I mean, uh, can, uh, when it comes to expectations, when you say that you know there's higher expectations than a lot of people, this team should be competing for a playoff, in, in contention for a playoff spot. But can you say that the expectation for next season, after not having a lot of expectations this year, is is making the playoffs next year? Can can, can you come out and outright at least say that? I mean. I'm not going to come right out and say anything, but honestly, our expectations are to win. 
And winning is making the playoffs. Winning is winning a Stanley Cup. That's why we all do it. That's how, well, that's why we put on that jersey, um, is to try to win a Stanley Cup. And that's what we're building towards. I'm not going to make any promises for next season or the season after or anything like that. But um, we don't want to look too far ahead. We're not going to say things that mean that that are uh, going to be interpreted as we're looking too far ahead. Right now, I'm worried about training camp. I'm worried about summer. I'm worried about building that. Worried about training camp and to take it game by game because if you start looking too far ahead, that's when it doesn't work out. You guys all rave about the culture, top down, locker room, different offices. Is there a moment or example that you really feel like embodies that culture that you guys built this year? One moment. Or a couple. Oh, I, I mean, the biggest one this year is probably the RJ night. I mean, to see a guy who's an absolute legend in this city be embraced and just relished and just see the whole, I mean, it was a sold out crowd and the whole spectacle after the game. And it was, uh, it was an amazing experience, I think, for our, our, our entire team. And it, it just got us so excited. I mean, he, he was a very impactful person in this community and to see the support that he got, um, is something that we're looking to build for ourselves. I think we're trying to build a legacy here and it's something that we're, like I said, we're going to take great pride in it, but that RJ night was something that I really thought was special and kind of embodied this year. And the timing of that, you know, your first year back here, so many young guys coming in. Do you think this is setting up the right blueprint? We sure hope so. That's what, uh, yeah, we're trying to put down a really good foundation. I think we've uh, made strides in the right direction. It's just uh, part of the, I guess it's just a building block going forward. So this year is done. We have a lot to be happy with, and we have a lot to think about and to really push us for next year. Alex, speaking of winning and excitement, your post-game celebratory woos were getting a lot of play on social. Curious if Ric Flair is the inspiration there and how crucial that energy is to this group. I honestly couldn't even tell you where that came from. I am a big Ric Flair fan, so, but... but that wasn't, I guess, the uh, origin of it. Um, something I, I think I just randomly did a couple games and then it started getting some social media attention and the guys in the locker room were joking around with it. So I just thought, hey, let's see where this goes and just keep doing it kind of thing. So um, it was fun. The guys uh, razzed me about it, ragging me about it a little bit in the locker room. I think they uh, they enjoy it, but um, it's, uh, it's it's just a fun little, I guess, social media kind of uh, get the fans uh, into it kind of thing after games. And we'll see if it comes back next year, if I remember to do it. But, uh, yeah, it was, it's been fun. We saw hey, the video. What does it mean that, uh, that Donnie picked up on it? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, – I was not expecting that in a uh, pregame meeting. Uh, he said play for the woo, so that, and then wrote it up on the board. Well, he started writing up woo on the board, and I'm like, where's he going with this kind of thing? And then as soon as it happened, I was like, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it's all in good fun, and it, it's good. I mean, that's the type of locker room we have. It's pretty loose. It's, it's fun, and um, it's just great to be a part of. How is all that? It's a collective group, but it starts at the top. It starts with the Pagulas and everything that they've done for this uh, organization and um, their work ethic to really try to put the right people in the right positions in this organization. Um, and those people putting uh, a team together that really enjoys to, to play together and to just be around each other and to let everyone be themselves. Kyle's um, really pushed the... Uh, the idea that we have a locker room that no one needs to do anything special, no one needs to go above and beyond, and everyone just is themselves and is accepted. And um, our leadership group has done an amazing job at that. So um, it's like you said, it's organic. It truly is. Did you know Malcolm the same? I, I I did actually. <laughs> I did. I did. He actually uh, I don't know. If 
he wants me to tell this, but he got hit in the uh, in the throat with a puck back when he was younger. He told me he used to be better, so we'll, I don't know about that. But, no, it was unbelievable, and we, we knew it. I, I, I didn't even tell some of my friends that it was going on. wanted to surprise them, and I, I'm not. He, he crushed it, and that was awesome. I, I loved it. It was great for him. And um, he's, he's outgoing once you get to know him, but he's a little shy and timid at first. So it's, uh, I was a little surprised that he actually got up there and did it, especially live. I thought it was recorded, and... He came out live and it was great. He gave us a lot of energy.